Okay, I'll, I'll come back to you over this because <laughs> I, I need something else to, to, to find out. But uh, uh, friends, the, the chairman of the Uganda National Company, uh, Mr. Emmanuel Katongoli, is here with us. And, uh, you know, the, something that has happened is uh, Richard is saying you've, he doesn't know the story. He doesn't know whether you need the money or not. Uh, but um, we, we want to know where are we today in, in terms of uh, funding the U, U, UNOC and where are we today in the sector? What are the delays that we're experiencing? And if we don't find the money, what's going to happen? Please. Uh, Mr. Emmanuel Katongol is a very familiar face in the business community. He needs no introduction. Oh, Please, well, thank you so very much, uh, Professor, and good afternoon, viewers. Uh, to, to fully understand the issues at hand, one needs to know how the national oil company, the Uganda National Oil Company, was put in place. Uh, this was uh, set up by an act of parliament, uh, chapter 42 uh, of uh, the petroleum exploration, uh, production and, and, and exploration. And, and development and, 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 and production uh, act. And the, the National Oil Company was registered as a private limited liability company with the two shareholders. And that is uh, the Minister uh, of Energy and Mineral Development holding 51% of the shares and the Minister of Finance uh, holding 49% of the shares. And uh, to go to your question, like any other business, uh, is funded uh, by, principally by two ways. One, through equity and uh, through debt. And when it comes to equity, it is the responsibility of the shareholders to fund. And I think Moses alluded to it, uh, the Ministry of Finance is being doing their best to make sure that the funds are availed. But we all know that the funds, the $849 million we're talking about, if all borrowed could exceed uh, borrowing limits as a country, we've got to be conscious that the national oil company will not exist uh, in, 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 in air. It should exist in uh, coexistence with the rest of the economy. Uh, and to do that, uh, uh, a number of proactive uh, decisions have got to be taken. Uh, but of course, uh, and I think Moses mentioned it, uh, to see that funding is got. Uh, and he mentioned the processes. Right now, uh, the operational funds are being provided, although not enough, by being provided through budget by the Ministry of Finance. And when it comes uh, to, to, to the projects, uh, commitments have been done uh, to, to, to make sure that is done. First of all, in the upstream area, that is not a major problem because the National Oil Company is being carried on uh, by the International Oil Company up to fast oil. And uh, when fast oil comes in, we've got a leeway of three years, three years uh, before the cash calls are, are really required of us. So that's not a problem. Then the issue goes to the midstream part of the business. Uh, and in that, again, Moses mentioned, we are to participate with 40% of the refinery. But the critical part of it that will define an immediate FID is the, the pipeline, where we to do uh, uh, we to do 15% of the shareholding, and 15% uh, to the debt equity ratio of 60 to 40 requires the national oil company to put forward 213 million dollars. 213 million dollars is a lot. But it's not something that is not doable. We have got all the assurances that the government of Uganda is doing whatever it takes to make sure that this money is availed. And I have no doubt in my mind that this money will be availed. Uh, then once the, 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 the FID is taken, 
investment opportunities will be opened to the rest uh, of, the, of the sectors. Uh, then we're going to look at, at issues like is mentioned, the various bonds, the various financial intermediations from, from various lenders uh, for, for equity participation. Uh, certainly, uh, when the time comes to call on a national social security fund, uh, all the preparations will be done like any other business uh, prepares. And, 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 and we're sure that the way the national oil company has been set up and managed, the National Social Security Fund will find it an, an attractive proposition to, to invest. So that's where we are. Okay, uh, I think from what Richard was saying, and um, you need to prepare your prospectors uh, so that they know what the company is about and maybe for if you're looking for money, they may wish to look at it and see if they can find resources for it. So, but I think from what he's saying, really, that the, the, there's no indication that uh, the oil sector needs money. Maybe they, he's had it in the press and, and, and right now. But um, uh, some legal issue you mentioned, the company was set up as a private company owned by two shareholders who are the ministers and I think here Moses may, be, may wish to indicate. So we regarding it as a private company owned by government and also as a private company which is a state enterprise. This may cause a bit of a problem. I think we may, you need some legal people to be able to understand where you're coming from in terms of the flexibility of the, 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 the company being run. But uh, in terms of funding, of course, we, this is a government company. We cannot say it's a private company, though set up under the uh, companies acting as a private company. So this may cause some issues, especially when you are seeking uh, the bond, as he indicated, uh, or when you are looking for, equ for equity participation from NSSF. These are issues that really you must clean up. However, I want to follow up with something else. Uh, having been with uh, UNC for some time now, you've seen other companies elsewhere. Uh, how are they performing? How, are they, how do they raise their money? You know, in, in Africa, there are some companies that are doing very well, uh, the, the oil companies owned by government. Uh, uh, well, uh, I think for the, really there are a number of successful oil companies that we can really look at. Uh, not very many in Africa, but, but we've got an example of the National Oil Company of Algeria. It's, it's quite a very successful oil company. We've got one in Egypt, quite a successful oil company. The one in Angola had some issues. It's now picking up. But, but there are a number of international oil companies that really we look up to and you say, oh, yes. Uh, Start Oil, which has just changed its name to Equinor, uh, of, of, of Norway has been a great example for which we, we have followed. And uh, the Uganda case is really followed the Norway example right from start formation and see what they've done. And uh, one thing that is so clear and foremost, which is a common denominator for all these national oil companies, is the total commitment from their national governments. Total commitment in terms of funding and to see them grow. This has been done, and as our brother from Ghana just said a couple of minutes back, uh, there must be that commitment. Uh, but other than that commitment from the national uh, uh, treasury, we have seen national oil companies being ha uh, allocated, having access to uh, direct exploration licenses. Uh, and in, in Uganda, this has been provided for by, by, by law. And as we speak, uh, the, the two cases where the Uganda National Oil Company is participating, and I think this will ease the pressure on the government of Uganda as far as funding is concerned. One is the direct application for license. Uh, we're participating with, with CINOC to do a direct application, and this should, should really ease the, the financing pressures. Uh, this uh, for the, the two uh, the, uh, the two fields uh, in the oil in, in, in the Albertan region, uh, but we're also trying to do a, a very independent uh, application for a license 
by, by UNOC as an entity. And, and once this is done, and this is again provided for by the law, and once this is done, our projection is uh, we shall de risk from the exploration risk as a company, but then present a, a, a business proposition to a partner, and we believe that will be actually much better than the current 15% that Uganda holds uh, in the various production licenses that we have. Uh, once that is done, we should be able to attract competent partners, and these will bring in capital, and for us, we should be able to bring in what it takes uh, as, as, as the owners of the license. Uh, the, we, the people tend to call it talolizing it. Uh, companies have done this before. Companies invested uh, as, as small as $100, $200 million, and when they were go going out, they, they were able to, to get as much as $1.5 billion. Why can't Uganda do it? It's a way of actually easing the pressure and, 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 and the beauty is that this is provided for by law and we're taking advantage of it. Okay, uh, I'll go back to Moses. I think uh, uh, Emmanuel is talking about, uh, you, you talked about a figure, 800 and uh, uh, 45 million dollars that the Uganda government needs for the 15 percent. Uh, what does that translate into, into dollars? 15% is about 1.15 15 million dollars? 15 billion well, 15% for the pipeline is 213 million dollars. The total amount in that, that is, will be invested in, the, in the, all the things that you're talking about. About 15 billion dollars, don't you? Yeah.